Okay, and we are live. Hi, guys. Here we are. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Oh, I've been looking forward to this so much. I know. <laughs> you yeah. guys have just been awesome um, whoa, to, whoa. to talk to. Oh, oh, what's sorry, happened? Sorry. I, I put that on mute. <laughs> 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 um, you didn't spill the wine, did you? No, no, it's all good. Okay, okay. 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 <laughs> yes, that would be a tragedy. What are what are you drinking this evening, Pete? So we've actually we've had this in the fridge a for a while. Wine. It is a um, other people's Pinot. It's called this yeah. is a Pinot Gris mm -hmm. from Willamette Valley, so Oregon. Yeah, we've been exploring black owned wine, and this is a lovely example. A big big hit. Yeah, so, it is. OTT. It's fantastic. Yeah, I love the name. Yeah, yeah we found this place. Um, there's actually two places um, in my neighborhood that um, their whole thing is they're they're trying to have um, a more diverse set more of vendors that they represent. Exactly. So they're looking at specifically women owned, black owned, and minority Just like, owned. Yeah, exactly. So cool. these two places cool. they have all kinds of wines like in, in those categories. That's pretty so, cool. It's yeah, called Coast great. Valley. In, in Brooklyn, yeah. There's Coast Valley, and then there's also Taste Wine and Spirits. Yeah. Um, For anyone you? in New York. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. I learned something, actually, on one of your recent videos, or maybe it was an older video that I was watching in your backlog, uh, Chris, where you were talking about that you, you know which importers import the wines that you like. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or have similar tastes to you, and I thought, oh, that's really that's a really cool idea. So I went home and told Matt, and then he goes, "Yeah, but most of the wine that we drink is Australian grown, so there is no import." Oh, <laughs> so I, there goes that idea. You know, the last time we spoke, um, I, I totally didn't bring this up, and I probably should have. But the Margaret Margaret River in yes. Australia has some of the best. Cabernet Sauvignon. I've Agreed. I actually like it better than the Napa stuff. And there's this one particular producer called Ringbolt, which we bought a lot. It's good. From, yeah. Is absolutely fantastic. Um, but Margaret River is amazing for cab. Um, yeah. Very nice. Very yeah. good. Well, uh, I used to live WA. That's in WA, and that's where I used to go to get my wine. So um, that's that. I'm pleased to hear that you you agree. And the Denmark. So there is a place called Denmark in south, southern Western Australia, and they do really good Pinots as well. I think they're good. So worth trying if you ever find a Denmark yeah. Pinot yeah. Noir. Yeah, yeah, not at all. Nice. Like, um, um, like, you guys are talking about wine. I'm just sitting here. Like, <laughs> sorry, Amina. I do sorry. actually love drinking wine, but, you know, I just haven't uh, – been able to drink any in a long time being that i don't go out as much anymore yeah. um but at the beginning of quarantine when i was overseas there was a lot of wine being drunk <laughs> in my apartment <laughs> well i've slowed down considerably i we, we were drinking a lot of wine a lot of wine during the whole covid thing last year yeah. and i was yeah everyone else that i know got fitter and stop drinking and you know they were just had these wonderful lives going on because you know they had more time at home i yeah. got fatter and i got drunker i guess <laughs> i just drank yeah. it. we drank all of our wine basically we had all this wine and we drank a lot of it so anyway there yeah, you go. Was one of the weird ones that actually got like i've avoided exercise my entire adult life <laughs> i don't like moving my body at all Okay. Um, any motion is considered work to me. Um, <laughs> I got really into rowing, and I bought. Yeah, a he's like a straight up athlete and now. I'm like crazy. seven days a week. Wow. No. Like I, I lost weight, so I, I feel better <laughs> about my drinking because I do. Okay. Yeah. Because you do the exercise. Yeah. Well, that's how Matt sees it too. He goes, well, as long as you ex he exercises like a fiend. Like he, he just. He can exercise with a hangover. I don't know how he does it. Well, he doesn't really get hangovers, probably because he exercises so much. Probably. But um, I, I just, I, I can't do it. If I, if we have wine the night before, there's no way I'm getting up to go to yoga or for a run or anything <laughs> like that the next day. So, you know, just forget that. Hi, everyone. Sorry. I, I'm all, uh, this is one thing I always forget to do is to say hello to everyone who's joined. So we've got Rich Mitch, Petra, Yelena. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle from the Uta Pantograph, uh, Ashbach, mm -hmm. lovely to see you all. Thank you, Heather. Um, and Brandon's here too. Hey, Brandon. Um, and Miss Felly, hi. 
All right. So cool. All right. So let's, um, we're here to talk about perfume, funnily enough, given that we're currently talking about wine. I don't know how we, I think I started that. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I didn't really have, I mean, I think the reason why this started with Amina and I talking about the fact that we had started sort of going down the vintage perfume path. We were chatting on Instagram one day uh, and then I, you know, I'd started talking to you guys. Um, so I just thought, oh, well, you know, why don't we just, you know, you guys are the, I think you guys are the pinnacle at the moment in terms of who to go to, to talk to about vintage perfume oh, on, in the YouTube, in the YouTube world. So, it's true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought, oh, we'll just, we'll just combine it, you know. Yeah. Everyone can get in, get in on this one. So, um, and like I, 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 I think in it, me and you were the same. But I, I've resisted, you know. I always told myself I was never go, going to go down the vintage perfume route yeah. because I thought it's just going to be too hard and too heartbreaking. Because even if I find something that I like, there's a good chance I'd never be able to find it again. Right. Um, but for me, I guess. <clears throat> I have so much perfume now that it's unlikely that I'd be surprised if I finish a bottle of anything within the next decade. Um, <laughs> so I thought, well, maybe yeah. maybe I can start, you know, del dabbling a little bit in the vintage stuff. And I think also because I have moved on to wanting to wear, I find a lot of the vintage sort of style fragrances um, don't have to necessarily be vintage, but the vintage style fragrances tend to be a lot softer and I find easier to wear. A lot of people find them challenging, okay. but I think that they're kind of easier to wear because they're so soft and well blended and they, they almost have a more natural perfume feel to them, whereas yeah. the more modern stuff is really loud. And, um, you know, I have an example of a fruity sort of perfume that's vintage here, which I'll talk about later, but I just find that even the fruity stuff is not like a fruity perfume that you would buy today. So, yeah. um, but the one did find when I started going and searching for vintage perfumes was that I ended up buying vintage versions of things that I already knew um, because when I started doing the vintage perfume shopping thing I realized very quickly that I had no idea what I was looking at or what I was buying so um, it kind of got overwhelming I was like I don't know what I'm I don't know what to buy because I don't know what these are so yeah. curious to know for all of you how you have a tackled that and approached it because um I'm still struggling with that <laughs> yeah well I think I'm gonna go first because I think Chris and Camille are like on level expert I'm still <laughs> <learning>. <laughs> but, but, um, thinking that. I, well I mean at least you you it seems that way so just just take it, take it. <laughs> you guys are experts in our eyes at least so um I guess for me at the beginning of me deciding to start a YouTube channel, I did like a small haul from this store, an online store in the UK, and I got a bottle of uh, Mitsuko. It wasn't a vintage bottle, it was made like in like maybe two or three years before that. And I love the smell. And of course, like you said, it's not a vintage, it wasn't a vintage formulation, but it just smelled, there was something about it that was just rich and opulent and not so, I don't know, not so basic, I guess. And I just love that it felt very old school. So then I remember watching a video with Chris and Camille when they went through different like eras of Mitsuku and, and you know, like compared them. And I thought that was a great video. And even before that, I've just seen posts on Instagram and always wish, like, oh, I wish I could get a hold of a vintage, you know, Mitsuku. So just, I always mispronounce it. Is it Mitsuku? Mitsoku. Mitsuko. Mitsuko. <laughs> I always, even in my videos, you'll see me like Mitsuko. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I would see people post their vintage bottles and would always wish, like, oh, I wish I could just get my nose on one. And the only way to really get, no one's sending decants of vintage fragrances, you know? So, I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot not of money for that. Yeah. Like, much yeah. more than it's. You might as well just get a bottle. That's exactly, true. exactly. So I kind of, at that point, I was like, okay, well, maybe vintage fragrances aren't for me because I don't know where to start. I was kind of intimidated by the whole process. And then fast forward to last year, we did the collaboration for Best Purchase of 2020. And uh, Maite presented uh, Miss Dior 
yeah. from the 80s. Mm -hmm. and the way she talked about it, and she would always talk to me, was like, Amina, this is great. You have to try it. You have to try it. So I just did a random search, and I found one really cheap, and I bought it. And that's how it started for me. And ever since then, now I have two bottles of that. And every that's time- fragrance, right? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's yeah. Fun. And I actually prefer the Eau de Cologne over the Eau de Toilette, weirdly enough, because oh, it's- I'll try it. Huh. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's great. I, I love it. I'm obsessed with it. As you guys know, I have like the yeah. mega bottle of it. Oh, um, and yeah, so that's how it kind of started with me. And now I have a handful of ones that I truly, truly adore. And it's kind of, it's also helping me broaden my taste in fragrance as well. Mm. Um, certain fragrances, for example, number five, Parfum. Before I got my vintage fragrance, I never tried it. I never tried it. Uh, but I was never a huge fan of number five EDP. So I got, uh, I found a bottle of the Parfum. I bought it. And then I was like, wow, this is just amazing. Like, I had no idea this is how it smelled. Obviously, it doesn't smell like the current one, but smelling the current one, I'm like, I, I also like that too. It's not as deep, not as rich, but yeah. it still has, you know, something about it that is just magical. So, yeah, that's how it basically started with me. Um, I don't know, maybe you guys, Chris and Camille, can share how you guys ended up. Like, how did you guys end up in uh, exploring vintage fragrances? I don't know yeah. the answer. So, I mean, we, we had a video recently. We said, why vintage? Right. right. So we discussed yeah, but how, some of it. How did we get into it is the question. So I got into fragrance in general because of you. Because yeah. you were getting into it. That's and true. His first his first fragrance was a vintage Mitsuko. Right. And by vintage, wow. 1999, yeah. right? So yeah. it's not it's not a 70s X-Trade or anything so like that. So it's like. Yeah. yeah. But um. And I just didn't have a lot of these associations in my mind with like kind of like old, you know, old ladies or old people or something. So yeah. I didn't like my head didn't go, oh, this is dated. It was just <laughs> different compared to what I grew up with in the 90s. Right. So I was like, Whoa, yeah. this is really interesting. So mm -hmm. I have to grab me onto it. And, you know, going down the, the vintage route was actually kind of like a like less weight on my shoulders because it was a way to like pump the brakes a little bit and be like, okay, I'm not even going to look at new stuff. You know, this has been around since 1919. It is tried and true. So I'm going to wear that and be done with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Look at it, actually. I didn't have to worry about anything else. Yeah. And then like I, I, I bought Balibur's High. I'm like, oh, this has been around since the 60s. Like, I, that's it. Mitsuko, Balibur's High, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and we all know what happened, right? right. Of course. <laughs> but in my mind, it was a way to actually exercise restraint in the world of fragrance that's yeah. so much bigger than just, you know, vintage stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now, like, we, we bought a lot of it. And I think we found out about a lot of it just through your reading. Yeah, um, so there's some great books out there for um, discovering vintage fragrances. And the one that we tend to mention the most is Sentence Aversion by Barbara Herman. And we yes. found a lot of beautiful, yes. Yeah, there we go. We found a lot of beautiful treasures in that book um, mm. pretty cheaply because yep. she lists a lot of fragrances that are sort of lesser known yeah. uh, that you can get on eBay for less than 40 or $20, even for an extra. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of incredible to like explore that world. And it feels very much like a treasure hunt, which yeah. is sort of nice. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people say, you know, oh, what's a good cheap fragrance? And a lot of times the answer is vintage. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. you know, unless you're going to, unless you're looking for Chanel number no. five or, you know, some of the really old Guerlain's, but, you know, some of the stuff that's off people's radar is cheaper than anything new you're going to buy. If, today. if you want beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. Beautiful composition, beautiful ingredients, and you want to pay less than fifty dollars, then yeah. most of the time vintage is your answer. That's your answer. Yeah. But people don't like that because a lot of times you have to do research, but you know, that's that's what it is. But not only that, like I think, you know, some people they're they're kind of like attached to labels, right? So they, they don't want something this. they don't want Ballot Versailles because no one knows what that is. Chris seems to think that, because we get the question a lot of like what our favorite designer fragrances are. And Chris seems to think that this is because people like the brand name. I think I don't is. think that's the case. Okay. I, I think it's like a perceived value thing where they think that if it's a designer fragrance, it'll cost less. And they don't realize that 
you know, if you go on eBay and get vintage fragrances, you're going to spend even less than if you go get like a new designer fragrance. Yeah. And it could be an accessibility thing too, That's where they exactly. feel like, you know, designer fragrances are pretty much everywhere in every city, whereas, you know, certain niche fragrances aren't right. available, right. Um, you know, in certain regions. And, right. If you want to smell and, person. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So no, I think you mentioned uh, about the research earlier, like, you know, you have to do a lot of research. To me, that's the fun part of it, actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, reading about it and searching and finding certain characteristics. It, it, I think that's the fun part of it, to be honest. Agree. And it slows down my buying as well <laughs> because yeah, it, it makes the shopping process a lot slower because if I find something, I think that looks interesting, but I don't know what it is and I have to go find out about it, then it just slows that whole process down a little bit and it makes me really think about what I'm buying and whether or not I want it. <laughs> that's yeah. yeah, that's a good point. And you'll see something on eBay and it's like, okay, I bet I can get that for less money. And you just keep coming back to it until eventually it's $50 less and you're like, okay, now's my time. And it's just <laughs> part of the fun too. It's like yeah. this whole game of, um, yeah, it's a treasure hunt a little yeah. bit. Right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, it's nice. So things go down on eBay. This is it. this thing. I obviously don't shop very much on eBay, but uh, I just thought that they got relisted for the same price until it sold. <laughs> or you just find something cheaper. Uh, sometimes if something's like up for a very long time and there's a make an offer option, and you lowball them, they'll just like let you have it for much cheaper. <laughs> Just because it's yeah. been up for like six yeah. months, you know. And sometimes yeah. if you just type in the, the the spelling of the fragrance, but spell it incorrectly, yeah, that's a good you'll get tip. a bunch of hits. Oh, and, and yeah. Yeah. See, that's a great tip. Is, um, aromatics elixir. I put in elixir, E L I X E R rather yeah. than I R, and there was one yeah. there forever for yeah. fifty bucks when the correct spelling was going for two hundred. Yeah, that's I got a good it for tip. fifty bucks. Yeah. So wow. you know, Mitsuko, misspell Galan, yeah. Yeah. you'll get better deals. For sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> do you go back to the um do you go back to the same same shop same shops all the time on eBay? There is one lady here in Brisbane who I've just discovered a few weeks ago and she's local and she has all these beautiful vintage minis on um Ooh, on eBay. So I've I'm actually have my eye on a Chanel parfum at the moment of hers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. um, and they're all still sealed as well which is yeah. cool yeah yeah it's always nice we can find a sealed one it's yeah. like yeah that's, that's do I even cool. open it do i keep it do i open it yeah but yeah it's yeah. Cool. people say you know don't buy anything from the russian federation um yes. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i have um i sealed things I've bought and I, I've had good experiences with a particular mm -hmm. seller. So I wouldn't mind going back to that person. Um, but I know a lot of people have had, you know, bad luck, but some things like you're just kind of asking for it. Like yeah. I bought a modern Chanel number no. five EDP from somebody in the Bronx, New York for like $20. And then I got it. I'm like, this well, isn't that, real. That's his own damn fault. Yeah. Like, <laughs> for $20 bucks, it was worth trying. <laughs> In my diffuser, you know, and I just kind of waste in the diffuser and it smells like Chanel number no. five. Yeah. Chanel no. five. It looks nice on my dresser. But, yeah. You know. yeah. Just wouldn't put it on your skin, but that's fine. Yeah. I mean, you've obviously found yeah. another use for it. So yeah. but, you know, I'm like, come on, guy. I'm like, this isn't real. He's like, yeah, you're right. And then he just sent me back the money. So <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. Well, really it's not not worth the argument. Yeah, for sure. But there is well. an Etsy shop, which is absolutely oh. amazing. Oh. Um, what's her name? So the name of the shop is Parfum de Paris. Yes, that's right. And her okay. name is Alexandra Starr it, she in has Hawaii. The most insane collection. I'm going to put it in the chat. Uh, yeah, please. It so is I a jaw-dropping <laughs> of like the most like <laughs> FU vintage you could possibly imagine. And I've heard like, you know, just from interacting with people on forums and stuff, you know, there's like rumors out there about this woman. Yeah. Like, like this like I mean, international it's, it's woman It's just of like mystery. stuff that you never see around and she's got like five bottles of everything. Wow. Yeah. Like 10 bottles of and like- And they're all just like bottles that you, it, it, I don't know. How, we, we messaged her to try to get her to like interview her on the channel and you never got a response. I never got a response. Yeah, she probably doesn't want to be bothered. Yeah, international mm. woman, that's great. She probably wants us, she wants us to lay low. She doesn't want yeah, to be yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she has like a LinkedIn profile, you know, and you okay. can 
you know, read everything. And she has this amazing like career that she's had. She's done different things all over the place. I'm so curious. Somebody about this told lady. me that had like some sort of knowledge about her that she moved her entire collection from like Texas to Colorado to Hawaii, where she lives now. Yeah. Oh, imagine the insurance you need on that. <laughs> yeah, on such a collection. Ooh. Like yeah. her, her collection, it has to be over a hundred thousand dollars. It's crazy. Easy. Wow. wow. That's, that's so amazing. cool. I'm gonna have to look up tonight. <laughs> I mean, it's high price point for all the stuff, but it's also stuff you would never find anywhere else. So yeah. 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 True. true. <laughs> so we have a question from Miss Felly who asked the question: At what time? What point does something become vintage? And I, I thought it was. Pre nineteen, is it pre nineteen eighty or pre nineteen ninety or something like that? Or but then uh, I've heard other things like you know if it's twenty plus years or thirty plus years. So I, I don't think know. in the US, right? There's like this special. If you drive a car, we don't drive cars because we're in New York City. But if you drive a car and it's over twenty five years, it's considered historic, right? And you don't, <laughs> yeah, you don't have to get it. Um, okay, 25. You don't have to get the emissions tested and everything. So that's considered a vintage car. If we're talking about people, right, I, I would consider myself a, a not a vintage person. You're a vintage person. <laughs> <laughs> if I were a fragrance, I'd be very vintage. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, think it, I think it really depends. And I think what it comes down to is not so much whether it's vintage or not, but when has formulations happened? When have they happened? When has mm -hmm. something changed significantly? Or when has an ingredient changed? Like for example, like if we're, uh, you know, doing the oak moss thing. But also vintage right. can be shorthand for like original formulation. Original formulation, right? Or close to it. Right. right. So, so like I would consider my message de minuit like a vintage bottle, but it's like from the nineties. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would say but 90s. It's like the first formulation of three before it got discontinued. Right, right, right. So it depends on when it came out and, and everything. I don't know if there's okay. a help for that. Um, I'm glad Miss Philly asked the question because that's a question that I had myself and wanted to ask. Like, what classifies a fragrance as being vintage? So, okay. So, another well, also, it's like, is it a vintage fragrance because that specific fragrance was released like in the early 20th century, but it's still available today and you can buy it new and call it vintage? Um, no, that is a, an, an old formulation, it's a vintage but, it's, formulation but, it's a, but new, it's a new bottle. It's a new bottle. So. Right. Yeah. So I would call that vintage style yeah. <laughs> or something like that yeah. you know, or a classic. But, it sounds like but in a lot of cases mm -hmm. where something still exists, it could be way different than it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Exactly. So, you know, it depends. And we were actually just talking about this the other day. Um, I've smelled enough older stuff and newer stuff of the same bottles. So for example, the Mitsuko thing, right? Yeah. Modern Mitsuko, there's 1999 and we smell 2005 and from the eighties. I would say the biggest point, the biggest, I would say date range where things significantly change is about the mid nineties. Okay. Yeah. If you have something from 1990 and you try the 1979 version, it's going to be much more similar than if you try the 1990 and then the 2005 version. Mm -hmm. yeah. Something mm -hmm. happened in the mid 90s where corporations were like, that's I think, it. I think it's a we combination gotta... of IFRA and like umbrella companies buying up these smaller brands and just like cutting the cost, like the budget yeah. like crazy. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, things have been very modified um after that point yeah okay so it seems like there's no one clear yeah. definition of vintage it just really depends <laughs> <laughs> like, well, like vintage yeah, equals this no it's like, like talk for 10 minutes <laughs> yeah I, I think it does change depending on what you're talking about yeah um and there was a bit of a discussion about this on one of the facebook groups here in australia a few weeks ago because people have been posting you know bottles of stuff and calling it vintage but what they actually meant was first formulation or something like that because the perfume itself might have only been released in 2010 yeah. and they're saying oh it's first formulation or but, but they were calling it vintage um and so people were getting confused and this whole discussion started and then Somebody did say that I think that anything 30 years plus was considered vintage uh, in perfume world and anything sort of 
pre sort of 19 or pre 2000 or pre 1990 or something was considered mm -hmm. classic but see I would use the term classic for a modern bottle of something that was really old yeah. you know, a really old sort of uh composition so um I so i use the language differently as well <laughs> i guess we all just have to define what we mean yeah. when we talk about it right, um, right, right. yeah I, I think because i um so one of the, also one of the reasons why i got into vintage was because i was waiting for things to open up physical stores like i really wanted to buy Vogue my and um, I wanted to buy it at Scent Bar here in New York City because we loved the place and I wanted to support that location. And I was just kind of like reading about Mai, checking, you know, poking around. And like Fragrenica, people were saying, oh, Mai reminds me a lot of Paco Rabanne. Lanine. No, that wasn't Sentence of Version. No, 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 no. Yeah. I got it, I got it first from Fragrenica. Maybe people in Fragrenica read it in Sentence okay. of Version. Okay, because I remember texting you <laughs> no, being no, no, like, no. Barbara Herman says. No, Barbara Herman <laughs> says. Smells like this thing. You should smell. No, no, no. Barbara Herman <laughs> says that Paco Rabanne reminded her of shocking, which I got. Yes, from that's right. Yeah. So he, see, this is the rabbit hole. Yeah. This is what happened. <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm gonna wait to buy mine. I'm gonna wait to buy mine. Yeah. But I gotta get this Paco Rabanne. Yeah. You know, everyone says it's similar. I want to try it, so I yeah. got it, and it just blew my mind. I love this fragrance. Mm -hmm. I have like five bottles now. Yeah. And then you were reading Barbara Herman. Right. She's like, oh, it says shocking here by uh, Elsa Scaparelli. Yeah. I'm she like, she like described La Nuit as being like an 80s version of shocking. And La Nuit is a fragrance that you love. Oh, yeah. And so I was like, you got to smell shocking. So we got shocking. So we got shocking. <laughs> so it was a way to buy stuff that was already and out And they're there. all very distinct fragrances, but I can see the through line. I love mm. the through line. And yeah. we, we, you know, kind of talk about that, I think, mm -hmm. a lot. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it was a way of buying stuff that was already out there while we were waiting for our, you know, our, our beloved brick and mortar to open back up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think I think that's how we all ended up buying perfume <laughs> last year, <laughs> waiting, waiting for the stores to open. But, yeah, that, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so we've got Kelly saying that uh, you guys Hi, are driving up the prices. <laughs> <laughs> Stop Kelly, driving. You're not like, like, stop, 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 super cheap. Yeah. Kelly, get a version and and thumb around that book and see what sounds good to you, and you'll find some you'll find some deals. I promise. And the truth is, we're not actually buying any of these. We're just we we have um vintage fragrance futures that we bought a long time ago. <laughs> and we're just talking about them on the channel. To well, but. Truth is, a lot of our like, if I were to average out what I spent on a vintage fragrance, I think it would be about thirty dollars. That's cheap. amazing. Yeah. What size do you normally go for? Because normally, when I find anything vintage that I think is worth buying or that like I feel comfortable bottles. buying, they're usually the little tiny ones, which I don't yeah. mind because at least it gives me an opportunity to smell them. But I'm just curious to know what sort of size you end up going for because. It's a mixed bag. I mean, for me, I like to have them as reference, so I'm not so concerned about how big the bottles are. So I yeah, think we have a lot here. of mini bottles. Yeah. Um, but I have some big ones too. Um, I don't know. I, it sort of depends on how lucky you are also, like what's listed at the time. Yeah. So, you know, there's a couple of things that I'll buy to wear, um, specifically Mycin, Lombard Mycin, yeah. La Nuit. And also shocking. And I think I have all big bottles. And I recently got four or five bottles of my sin just this week. Oh wow. I think I paid on average 40 bucks for each one. Wow. Yeah. And that's a discontinued fragrance, the legendary fragrance in the perfume world, like in the like in the industry. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic. And, and no one talked about it. And it's such a good fragrance. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to find one. My sin, you'll love it, Amina. It'll okay. be really well. Yeah. And you can get it like for forty dollars for an extra. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I'm gonna well, be on the hunt for it. Yeah. And also do some research. And all that. <laughs> yeah, but some of the uh, other stuff that's like very rare, and you know, I don't mind having a little bottle because I'll just smell it once in a while. I'm not yeah. Sure yeah. It on every day. Yeah. You know? right. I'm a bit the same. I've got a couple of the little Chanel's. Here, which oh, you know, like these, these sets, these vintage sets that you get. I have one right here. Yes, I've seen a couple of those it's on awesome. eBay, and I've been tempted. Yeah, 
We need so some. this is like a bunch of Jean Patou fragrances. <gasps> oh, wow. Nice. And it's a Look bunch of mini that. bottles, but it's like a really good overview of their whole yeah. Of books, right? Yeah. And it comes in this cool little thing. And it's from 25 to 64. Um, so That's you just awesome. get like a really cool impression of, of their history, right? right? And I think it's worth it for that. And I think this cost me a hundred bucks for all those little, I think that's, that's pretty yep. good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. How many wow. are there in there? Um, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 12. Okay, for a hundred? Yeah, that's, for 12 that's, that's not too bad, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, these are just for reference for me. And if I fell, if I fall in love with something, then maybe I'll get like a bigger bottle of some. But yeah. yeah. I mean, this this kind of thing is really fun for me. Yeah, it's just so like the discovery of like you know this the, this sort of nostalgic yesteryear, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, cool. it's fun to find stuff like that. Yeah, and there are a few sets like that. Like you got a bunch of like old Calhoun for like nothing. Yeah, and the um the these, like little like these gift sets. You can also get these little like um. Perfume nips from the 30s. Oh, you okay. know what you're yes. talking about those. They look amazing. Um, yeah. yeah, can you show me? I, I need to see. Yeah, them. And, and that's the best way to smell vintage because, you know, light doesn't touch it, you know, air so, doesn't yeah. pass. It preserves it really, really well because it just doesn't oxidize. Yeah, so Rich, actually, um, I, I know that it uh, Samsara has real Mysore sandalwood in it. Uh, I've heard this. Oh, nice. So um, see, this is like something that companies gave out to their employees as like a marketing thing. So this is like yeah. AAA and it's just full of these really strange tubes and you break off either tip and you, it's just like one serving of perfume yeah. to it out. And so you'd like put it on your skin and because it hasn't been exposed to air in like decades and decades, like the top notes are really amazingly preserved. Yeah. And this is kind of the best way to try vintage fragrances as they were meant to smell. Wow. Um, and you get like, you know, 10 in a pack and they're pretty inexpensive to buy on eBay. Just look up perfume nips. And uh, yeah, these used to be sold in vending machines to women like after the war as a way of like having a luxury without having to ask their husband for money. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, they're, they're pretty cool. Um, That's really cool. Now, I'm curious, Camille, because I know that you claim to be, well, you are a very much an undersprayer, but how do you feel about wearing an entire nip? Is it too much or? <laughs> That's a good question. No, we, we, you know, we, we still haven't gone through this because it's sort of intimidating. We have to be like prepared to like yeah. fully Let take mental notes or physical notes. Yeah. You know? It's yeah. just like, right. Yeah. It's, it's a little, um, you know, it's kind of a fleeting experience to yeah, some degree. But to we actually got great. that particular package because I bought a, a full bottle of shocking, and the shocking that I got was from the '90s. So you found that there was original shocking in that. Yeah, we, we compared, compared them. Right? Yeah, and they're actually and they're, pretty close. They're pretty, I'm telling you, yeah. the '90s fragrances wow. are okay. Yeah, After the that, '90s shocking is things change really good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Really anyway, happy. sorry, Chris, you were addressing uh, Rich's comment before as well. I don't think you yeah. got to. Yeah, so Samsara, I've heard that it has the real Mysore sandalwood in it, and I do want to get some of that vintage Samsara for that. We've never smelled Samsara. No, I, I haven't either. <laughs> you like it, right? I do. I have a vintage yeah. bottle here. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never um, smelled it. Yeah, I picked this up a few years ago, but, um, yeah, I love it. Uh, somebody... I don't know who, I can't remember, but somebody used to wear this when I was a child. So yeah. somebody's mother used to wear this. And so I very much remember this. It does take me back to a particular place that we lived. Um, and it's just really, I, I really, really love it. I hardly ever wear this one, though, because of, it's so special. But I really should just wear it because I don't want it to go bad. Really bad yeah. But um, it does smell... I, I think I talked about this in a, in a video um, where I said that the current formulation of Sam. I mean, I still love the current formulation. I have bottles of the current formulations in both the EDP and the EDT, and they are different. But I think if you've never smelled the vintage and you don't want to go, and it's pretty pricey now to buy a vintage bottle of Samsara. Um, yeah. So, you know, you, I would say just, just buy the current 
version because it still smells like samsara. It's just not okay. as soft and round. And I, and maybe I'm, you know, I could be, you know, maybe people think I'm some kind of heathen for saying that, but because I, I'm not very good with sandalwood in terms of picking it out in a fragrance. To We're me, samsara, American. samsara in sense and subversion is classified as a woody fragrance. Yeah. Whereas I would classify it as a floral. It's so, I think the florals in it are so big um, that I, I really struggled to consider. And all I can say is that the difference between the old version and the new one is that the, it's a, it just feels a bit deeper, it's a lot softer, um, but that's kind of what happens with all of the vintage perfumes. They all seem deeper and softer somehow around, around the edges. And so I, I don't know if that's the sandalwood specifically. or I, I totally agree with you, Shuri. I think sandalwood is kind of an ironic ingredient because um, it was such like it was in every perfume in the 20th century, which led to over harvesting. And then eventually it became like endangered. And so now it's like hugely expensive and inaccessible. So now it's become this exclusive ingredient. Exactly. Right? But it was but just so prevalent in every in a blend for a long time. in a blend. Sandalwood doesn't stand out. It's used because it sort of like fades into the background and sort of creates this like creamy woodiness that's sort of vague and just like gives everything, it just blends everything together. Like it's a it's, fixative too, right? Yeah, it is sort yeah. of used as one of those um, magical ingredients like rose. If you put a tiny bit of rose in something, it'll sort of, uh, oh, what happened? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it, like you put a little rose in something it will just make everything a little smoother even if you can't detect that it's rose you know yeah. sandalwood mm -hmm. is one of those ingredients and so this idea that people are like fixating on Mysore sandalwood Indian yeah. sandalwood like oh that's the real stuff I it, it's kind of yeah. interesting rare equals good to a lot of people yeah and, it, and and you know it's it's not one of those ingredients that sort of stands out I'm sorry <laughs> someone's looking for you they're really keen to get hold of you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I find sandalwood, and I, I know like sandalwood snobs out there, I find it boring, right? And I said this. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's a beautiful ingredient. And I said this, like, and we have like a thousand people sending us stuff. They're like, you haven't had the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I have so much sandalwood fragrance to smell, it's ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah. I'll smell it and yeah. I'll see. But you know what? It's in every shaving soap that I've been right. smelling since I yeah. was 12. Mm. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So I mean, I'm keen to try. I'm oh, sorry, Mena. No, you were saying about um, how some Sarah reminds you, like you think someone in your childhood wore it mm -hmm. because it was so familiar. But for me, I felt the same way. I bought this. Um, YSL, is this considered vintage? I don't know, it's from the 90s, but a little tiny mini of champagne. Ooh. And um, when I smelled it, it just took me back to my childhood because I know someone, I don't know who, and I asked my mom to smell it and she couldn't pinpoint it. But my cousin who I grew up with also agreed that this smell, maybe a lot of women wore it in the 90s, I don't know. But I think someone that was close to us wore it. And of course, back in the day, I didn't know that they were wearing champagne. But when I first smelled it, when I got this, I was like, this this is ringing bells. So yeah, I think a lot of fragrances that were especially in the 90s, because that's where I think most of us were kids maybe, um, they are very, they will you know, conjure up some memories for sure. Sorry, I'm <laughs> catching up on all the count comments. <laughs> I'm way behind. Yeah, there was sorry, a lot of time. I totally ignored <laughs> you all. You were saying about, um, you know, vintage samsara versus the new one. I think yeah. Caroline is one of those houses that spends a lot of time and thought into their current formulations. And I, mm. I of their that, classics. Of their yeah. classics. And I think most of their new ones are very good and very close to the, the, point the modern where you, Mitsuko is pretty astounding. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it really is. Yeah. Um, and I know Luca Turin has said that of Guerlain and also Chanel, the exclusive yeah. line. Yeah. Um, so I think certain houses are just better at it. You know, they spend more money than others. Yeah. Um, but then not, again, I'm, like, yeah. you know, that, that could change. Like a lot of Guerlain yeah. um, classics are being discontinued. And I think that has to do with their new management yeah. to a certain degree. Like Après Dondé is gone, uh, Mouchard de Monsieur is gone, and a few others. So yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Car Caron doesn't look 
Oh, that's too much yeah, better. Yeah, Yadagon's right gone. Yadagon's gone. Uh, Puranam's gone. Le troisième homme. Or is Puranam gone? Le troisième homme's gone. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I saw a, a Pep do a review of Tabac Blonde. He'd had a vintage yeah. sample or something and then he bought a bottle and he was really disappointed. <laughs> he just said it's totally different. And I think That's I think sad. he was also saying it might be getting discontinued as well. So I, I can't remember if yeah. he said that or not. But, yeah, it's um, it's, it's, it's a shame for sure. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Um, I... I, it, it's fun going down the vintage route, um, but I think I'm—I don't think I think I'm at the point now where I'm going to stop buying vintage versions of things that I already know because I find that if I already love the current version, <clears throat> then it's 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 interesting to smell what an original version of it might have smelled like. Like Chanel Number no. Five is one that I'm keen to smell the original of, but other than that, I sort of think, well, you know, if I already love the current version, then it doesn't really it's just another expense of adding to, I may, I may as well buy something else, some other vintage fragrance that I've never heard of or, you know, or that you know, in, catch, catches my fancy. But, but yeah, the sandalwood thing, uh, I, I don't know. I, I think it's just me. I do have sandalwood oils at home, different types, and they smell quite different from each other because they're all from different regions. So I can pick that up. But when I try and smell it in fragrance, it doesn't smell like the oils that I have. So, um, uh, but that's how it's meant to perform in like classic mm. structures. It's meant to like melt into the background, and that's the strength of that material. Um, yeah, like patchouli, mm. um, like a lot of materials do that. Yeah, I think a lot of the the, the oud nerds um, love sandalwood because originally oud was blended within sandalwood for like a tars. And oh, really? yeah, that makes so sense. So it, it it provided like a base. Yeah. So I think that's kind of like where a lot of love comes from is from, you know, people that love Atars because it's just such a central component of a fragrance, yeah. you know, in, in those kind of forms. Yeah, and so, also the scarcity factor, I think. Um, is more so today, yeah. probably, yeah. than in the past. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, Michelle, I haven't opened Open my it. joy either. Open it, Michelle! <laughs> yeah, okay. it. It's worth it. Um, yeah, I'm, I saw that bottle posted on, I saw her post that on Instagram and I, it looked, it looked very nice. <laughs> open it, open it. The day that I got my Chanel number no. five, it was sealed. I ripped it open. I was like, I need to smell this now. <laughs> I thought about it. I was like, should I keep it and maybe find another one to open? And I thought about it for maybe like 15 minutes and I was like, you know what, forget it. I'm opening this thing now. Yeah. Don't wait. Experience. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm in two minds because I, I kind of had, I had a, I don't know, I, I had a vision for this bottle of perfume, <laughs> and I was worried that if I can't find another one, okay, um, I, I don't know, you know, and I and also I don't know how to open it because it's like it's fused, you know. I don't know. Wow. Is it a wax or? Um, no, it's a. I don't know if I can show yeah, you, but it's it's like the little gold. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think it's a wax. Nice. Is it wax? What is it? The material that sometimes it just gets like stuck with like gunk. Yeah, just yeah. from the environment, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had that one bottle of Nuit de Noël. Yeah, yeah, that was a little tricky. Yeah. Um, oh, was that sealed? Was it when you bought that one? It was. Yeah. Uh, was, okay. But it was only like two thirds full because I guess it still evaporated a little bit just right, over right. time. Because it's just one of those like apothecary cap type of situations on the X ray. Mm -hmm. um, but it had like that kind of like twine wrapped around. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. it was, yeah, it was like a new thing. Right. Like, yeah. Another uh, kind of interesting topic that we've kind of discussed in the past about vintage is um, kind of like the, the global footprint aspect of it and also like the ethics mm -hmm. of yeah. like the animal nodes. Yeah, that's things. a big consideration right. as well. Yeah. yeah, I did like uh, that conversation. Yeah, I never uh, thought of it until you guys mentioned it, like especially with if you're cruelty free like Aaron, for example. Yeah. Right? But it's kind of like a way to get around, uh, you know, that cruelty free thing because it's, it's out there, it's already there. They're not currently, you know, um, testing on animals. So I, I never ever thought of it that way. So I thought that was really Well, cool. Aaron's main motivation with that, I think, is mainly not giving companies whose practices she doesn't agree with money in order yeah. to 
can use fragrances. Yeah. But you can also add the factor of, you know, these fragrances are already out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're not like, you're not causing any additional harm in buying this fragrance, yeah. especially on the second, on the second hand market. Like, yeah. yeah. And also just, you know, like environmentally with like emissions and stuff like that. Yeah. Like the, the best thing for emissions is to not produce anything new. Yeah. Right. And yeah. if something's already out there, like the emissions, we've already breathed them in and we've already gotten our particulates from it or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, you, it's a good way to, you know, help help the globe as far as that goes, right? Yeah. It's from from like a, the other side of the spectrum, you have the fact that these are fragrances that were formulated before IFRA was a thing, right? For the yeah. most part. Mm -hmm. So maybe they have ingredients that you wouldn't find nowadays for better or for worse, you know? Yes. Um, that you can like sort of get a sense of what perfumes used to be able to smell like. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? I'm really excited for, you know, to see what really comes out of some of these aroma chemical companies as, as you know, you know, synthetics, I think, get a bad rap, but there's a lot of money poured into this stuff. And mm -hmm. we don't know what we're going to have 10, 20 years from now in terms of synthetic chemicals that could I mean, really a lot bring, of you know, new smells or just new kind of feels to fragrances, we don't know, right? Yeah, as far as like animalics, uh, the synthetic like uh, substitutions that I've smelled are like really, really good. They're, they're good, yeah. So like civet, uh, which is like a type of synthetic civet, smells better than real civet, if you ask me. It mm. smells really, really good. I don't think I've ever smelled real civet. I don't think you've smelled civet. But... No, um, I have. No, you've smelled the like civet essence, which is oh, something okay. else. Okay. Yeah. And the musks, the synthetic musks, I think across the board. Some great. of them are really, really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, same is true for, I think there's a castorium replacement. That's pretty good. Like there's this, yeah, there's, there's a lot of really interesting synthetics yeah. going on. But, but I think the pro the, the issue with, uh, I think the modern, um, animalic synthetics is it gives you the note Right, mm -hmm. but I don't know that it actually is a functional ingredient the way animal notes were back in the day that had that fixative property that right. round everything yeah. out I, that, I that, know that, the that hold that. it. They're yeah. probably just there to kind of like give you the illusion that they're there, but without being functional. I'm mm -hmm. guessing. Yeah, I'm, I guessing. I, I'm working on a perfume right now, and I was adding Costas Olifac, which is like a synthetic blend that's meant to smell like Costas and Costas is very regulated. And so I put it in the blend and, and basically it smells a lot like dirty scalp Costas. <laughs> Cause of course I want my perfume to smell like dirty scalp. And mm, so, <laughs> and so uh, I put it in the blend and all of a sudden it smelled so minty. And I was like, what's going on here? And then I smelled the co Costas and I was like, oh, okay, whatever accord they made here has like benzyl salicylate in it or something, something, a very minty molecule. And I was like, that's kind of a bummer because I can't use as much as it, of it as I would have liked because right. it's like got this weird, but maybe real Costa smells that minty. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't um, either. Anyway, something to think about, but like, yeah, it's, there's never going to be like a real one for one, but um, I think they're really exciting buns and, and molecules out there available to, yeah. Yeah, substitutions. Yeah. yeah. So um, Dawn Spencer Hurwitz, she does, she has animalic fragrances, but no real animalic notes. You guys sent me a sample of. That's not actually vent. true. Well, she she only has ethical animalic notes. Right. Okay. Yeah. So okay. She okay. Really okay. Use like ambergris and um, Africa yeah. stone. Hyracium. Yeah. Okay, so you guys also sent me a, a sample of Mabet by Eris, and that's supposed to be a synthetic animalic. Mm -hmm. so, and that one, I know, um, I think Michelle's the one who told me about it and she just put a comment asking, what do you guys think of, of that animalic or that synthetic animalic accord used in that fragrance? And she's the one who told me that it's completely synthetic. And when I first smelled it, I was like, dang, this thing is, is, is <gasps> <Yeah. laughs> thank you. you know? I really, I actually really loved it. And I kind of thought it was the similar animalic level as maybe a little bit more toned down than Salome by um, Papillon. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's one that I hope to add to my collection soon. So thanks for sending me that. <laughs> yeah. But the fact that it is a synthetic um, animalic mill is pretty, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, they're really good. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. 
So which vintage collection in you guys' collection is like, or vintage fragrance in your collection is your like prized possession? Oh man. If you have to choose like three. <laughs> <laughs> Which favorite? The top three. <laughs> yeah, right. Is that how it is? One. That's uh, very kind of you, Amina. But you can do two. <laughs> my, my most recent honorable mentions. Yeah, my most recent acqu acquisition was that um, Caron Nuit de Noël uh, background mm -hmm. bottle. That was so cute. Yeah. <laughs> so amazing the packaging, and it comes with this cute little box and then a tassel and blah blah blah, and uh, it was sealed when we got it. And I can only imagine it's probably. 30s 40s like i didn't yeah, date old. it but it's old you know it's, it's yeah mm -hmm. like back around i'll go grab mine actually yeah oh yeah it, it. It, it smells so nice um i mean it's a 1920s fragrance and we love the 20s uh, as, as an era um and my sin my my sin x-ray for sure is top three um what do you got there oh crepe de chine is so good yeah that's good too de chine. yeah Ooh. oh yeah okay so I wanted to get one of those, but I lost a bit. Oh, Amina, you'll love it. This is, this is <laughs> not to enable you any further, but awesome. no, I'm like crying inside, like, damn, I should have fought awesome. harder. Yeah. <laughs> it's green chupra. It's uh, green, it's dirty and animalic, and it's an old bottle. Um, I don't know, but I decanted some of it, and we love it. Yeah. So this would definitely be one of them. Okay. For me. Yeah, that one's really good. It's that fantastic. one's top notch. And I also love my um. Well, I'll, I'll get this one too. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous question. I know. Um, what else? I recently got One Thousand by Jean Patou, uh, mm -hmm. based on a recommendation by artisan perfumer Chris Russick, and um, okay. that's his favorite fragrance of all time. Yeah. Uh, and it's like right. a green sheep bro, and, it, and it's really good. Yeah. It's oh, I have it here. <laughs> Oh. Everyone's like going out of frame. Yeah, I'm really, <laughs> I'm really, um, that's wow, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Because, yeah, they're really good. You know, one of mine would be my vintage joy, you know, yeah. In the bottle. Oh, yeah, that's right. Bottle. Nice. Just absolutely Ooh. awesome. I'm sure it smells oh. amazing. Good stuff. So good. Yeah, so good. Uh, well, let me go get my suit. No, I'm no. <laughs> 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 How about you, Cherie? It's a fun thing. Um, well, given that I haven't opened the joy yet, I can't say that open I it. Yeah, I, open I can't I'm not gonna open it today because if I if I open it on right. camera yeah. and I break it, oh, I'll yeah. cry. <laughs> I think we'd all cry with you. I think we'd uh, all cry look, I um, I just love them all really. I think at the moment I'm really on a on a on the 24 Forberg train at the moment. I just love this fragrance. I, <laughs> I just keep wanting that. to wear yeah. it over and over. And it's, it, 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 is, um, yeah, yeah. it is a little bit different from the current EDPs, this is the EDT. I can't remember what year okay. it's from, but I did date it when I bought it. Uh, it's, the code is UF1G. Uh, if I, uh, Raiders of the Lost Scent is great for helping me to oh, date yeah. it. I, I have just, a bookmark um, on my yeah. <laughs> And they had a you know, had a very extensive blog post on just this fragrance, and um, they were saying that. So this is still from a, the original formulation um, before it got reformulated by Bertrand Duchaufal. Okay. Um, so yeah. Anyway, but that's probably currently my favorite. But I put um, the Coco Chanel on Ooh. last night because I haven't really smelled this properly, and I kind of disregarded it when I got it because I bought it. And the, because the top notes are, have gone a bit sour, so when you put it on your skin, it feels sour. And um, I've kind of just ignored it. I just sort of had it in my head, oh, it's, it's, it's turned. I'm just not paying attention to it. And it wasn't until uh, I watched a video by you guys, Chris and Camille, uh, where you were talking about just leave it for a bit and just wait. And yeah. so I did that. And um, it is very nice <laughs> in the dry. Once you get past yeah. that first half hour or so, it's, it is very, very nice. It still smells like Coco Chanel, the modern version, but I would say the spices in this, um, again, are just a little bit softer, a little bit more rounded and le a bit less stabby than the current one. Okay. So, um, but I, yeah, I really enjoy this. And, but then the, I've got the opium. So yeah, I can't decide. So it's top three. I guess maybe that's my top three. <laughs> that <is> fantastic. <laughs> yeah. 
Our, yeah, but, so. heard the modern formulation is pretty, pretty close. Good, yeah. I, I thought it was not because I uh, confused opium and black opium, which are obviously very yeah. different. Very different. Very different. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, opi modern opium is supposed to be pretty close. So I've smelled the modern opium um, in the brown packaging, which is, mm -hmm. but I find that the spices in that, um, it's much more peppery, I think, from rec my recollection. This is a lot more kind of ambery. Uh, but I haven't got, I've never put the modern opium on my skin, so I don't know how it dries down. But may, but when I've just smelled it in the store, I thought, oh, wow, that's really spicy, really dry and very peppery. So, um, yeah, but, I mean, I, black opium is trash. I just saw that. I, have to post it. I actually like <laughs> black opium, so stop. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I also would love to get my nose on the vintage opium. Because I, I, I also smelled the modern one. I thought it was really right. nice. Yeah. But I can I only you recognize it if you smelled it, I mean, yeah. um, because uh, it's it was worn a lot. Well, yeah. when I was Probably. when I was a kid, it was very common. So, um, yeah, it's. I, I think my you, mom wears it, but I, I, I don't recognize it from you know. Yeah. She's like, yeah, I have it upstairs. I've been wearing it for years. Ever since you're a little kid, I'm like, <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah, and I just maybe she doesn't wear enough. She doesn't wear enough. Yeah, <laughs> spray or like uh, Camille. Hold women in your life. Like one spray. Angel. <laughs> She's been wearing Angel. I, I recognize the box. Yeah. I recognize the bottle. I've been seeing it my whole life, but I smelled it. Yeah. And it's as if I'd never smelled it before. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this is what my mother wears. I'm like, oh. There you go. It's supposed to be like a. Locked it out. Yeah. You're just like, Ooh, too much. <laughs> wow. Okay. There you go. Well, there you go. I have to pick three. You do. One is here, and I keep it in the box. But we're talking about Bal uh, Versailles, and I got ah. one of the older ones, and I love this bottle because it's not like the traditional round bottle, but it's in one of these. If I can, okay, here we go. It's so pretty, and mm -hmm. my first time actually yeah. smelling it was with this bottle. And uh, Michelle came over a couple weeks ago, and she brought her bottle. I think it's her. I think hers is a modern formulation, and we compared them. And they're very, very, very close. Just very yeah. minor yeah. differences. Just very, very minor. But I, I still just like the fact that this is, I, I haven't successfully dated it yet, but I wanna say it's not the original one, but not far away from when it first um, came out. But I do really enjoy this one a lot. And I don't wear it as much as I should, but it just smells so, this smells good. I know Michelle. I mean, yeah, Michelle has smell. I think almost all of my vintage stuff because when she comes over, it's like, okay, smell this, smell that. Let's compare this. Let's compare that. Um, As you and, um, yeah. <laughs> but I, there is something very satisfying. I think even even when you feel like there's not that much difference between the modern and the vintage version, yeah. it's just something so satisfying about having the vintage bottle. I think, right. and they look amazing too. I so. know. I know. Um, I would say one that surprised me. That's and I have a feeling uh, Chris and Camille might hate it because it is <laughs> from the 90s. And when I got it, I was surprisingly, like I was shocked that I, I actually liked it. And this is Escape by Calvin Klein. And oh, I think this is one know. that, okay, we said we're gonna send each other samples. I'm adding this to it because okay. I would like to know your thoughts. Cause I know you guys yeah. are not fans of fragrances from the 90s, but this is great. It's like a floral, slightly like aquatic, peppery green fragrance. And I think it's great. I just love it. <laughs> yes. That is true. <laughs> <Different> I'm sorry. <laughs> I am sorry. Um, but so I, I think it's great. From just Maybe smelling. because it's surprising. Yeah. <laughs> the whole house was just, it was intense. It's always intense every time uh, Michelle comes over. Um, <laughs> If I have to pick a third one, oh, I don't know. Maybe this one, because I find this to be super wearable, even nowadays. Uh, this is Dior Essence by Christian Dior. And I want to say this is from like the late 80s, this particular bottle. And it's just so clean. It's like a perfect after shower scent, uh, which sometimes I feel like I'm wasting it when I wear it after I shower. I'm like, I should wear this when I'm going out and about. But I think it'll be really great for the summer. It's like a fresh, 
um, a little bit green, citrusy, very light citrus, floral. It's really, it's just, it's beautiful. And no one, I don't know, do people talk about this one? I don't know. But yeah, yeah. I wish I got a bigger bottle. About it. No, a Thomas lot from Ash one when I was talking about it. Okay. Yeah, this one, I've tried the Diorella, I think. And Ash, yeah, no, I just got that. I love it. Diorissimo is the one that I don't like. Oh, really? Um, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that. You one. have to have like the Lily of the Valley sort of point reference. Yeah, too. okay. For, for me, Lily of the Valley, maybe it's like because I'm French, like Lily of the Valley is such a like nostalgic smell for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, Durissimo, I love. So, Lily of the Valley, I have this. Actually, you can't actually make that like get a natural, right? No. It always has, it has to, be, to be in accord. Yeah, always. something about how the plant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know this until you told me recently. Yeah, um, I, I I read about it, and I'm not a scientist, <laughs> but something about like how the the smell. No, I'm not. Is this a news here? So something about like the smell not coming out of the petals, but like some chemical reaction where it's like happening as it's oxygenated. So the smell happens in the air around it rather than from the plant oh. itself. I don't know. But that's what I read, and oh, you, yes. can, you can't <laughs> extract a, an oil from the leaf of the valley, but you okay. can't make an accord. Uh, and typically, it's just like jasmine plus green plus cyclamen is how you make mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Now we know. Yeah, yeah so Gelan does a, um, a Mugwe fragrance that they bring out, I think it's every year or something, where they make a big fanfare. It's like they bring it out for a period of time every year or, or I don't know. If it's every year but they and it's really pretty it's a beautiful bottle they put it, do it in the beer bottle and it's, sorry bee bottle not beer bottle uh, and they have all the flowers and stuff on it it's really pretty it costs a yeah. bomb though to get the full presentation mm. but I yeah. just remember thinking because you know when I learned that lily of the valley was a, a you know a composed smell rather than an actual um extract yeah. uh, I was thinking well why do I want to pay so much for a bottle <laughs> Even, it's just made up. <laughs> it's really hard to find a good Mugia solar floor. It's really yeah. yeah. And Jerry Simo is the closest I've come to. Um, next to maybe Mugia Fleury by Oriza, but that one yeah. is very linear. Um, Jerry Simo is the one. So um, the whole <laughs> Lily of the Valley on like the 1st of May, that's a thing in France, right? Yeah, it's like... Yeah. Yeah. Um, so last year... I, I went to a flower kind of bodega <laughs> before I was going to her place. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to get her a lily for May Day. It was May 1st. I'm like, oh, this is going to be so nice. She's going to be like, oh, oh, May Day, oh, May Day. <laughs> and be all excited. I give her a flower. And she opens the door. She goes, what? It's not Lily of the Valley. I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, okay. okay. It's not easy to find. I'm like, it's not it's Lily of the Valley. Damn, can you? <laughs> oh, You're like, what is this crap? <laughs> oh, that's gold. Yeah, I, Lily of the Valley is um, my mother used to love. My mother's always worn youth dew. That's the only fragrance I've ever known her to wear. Oh, but um, but she always, if we if you, if we ever came across a soap that was a Lily of the Valley soap, she'd buy everything that was Lily of the Valley scented. She loved Lily, yeah. Lily of the Valley. Um, and I knew that for Mother's Day, which is usually in May in Australia. So, or it is, it is in May, not usually, it is in May. Um, <laughs> so I, I usually used to get her something Lily of the Valley um, because she loved it so much. But, yeah, there you go. I never knew until probably last year that you, you couldn't actually extract it. So, yeah. But I'll have to try Durissimo. Was it, hang on, was it Durissimo that you said yeah. was the Lily of the Valley one? Yeah. I, I've always, always get those confused, the Diorella, the Durissimo and whatever the other one is, I, I used to, I never really paid attention to them because they were confusing yeah. to me. <laughs> maybe my bottle's gone bad. I'll send you a sample so you can make sure. Maybe my bottle's gone bad. It's possible. Yeah. Um, the perfumer like famously went into his backyard and like sm sniffed some Lily of the Valley he was growing and like tried to like match the scent. Okay. Um. So yeah, it's, it's meant to be like, as, as close as he could get it, and he is like a very, very respected perfumer. Wouldn't Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. He he did the um the Sauvage. Uh, oh, a lot of stuff, Sauvage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of okay. other. 
I mean, yeah. pretty much everything he does is great or like classics today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, a couple of Chanel's too, I think. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head, but why? Yeah. Well, see, that's I don't know who that is. <laughs> Hydroxy. Chanel all sick of the Yeah. Oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Houdini was also saying, oh, synthetics don't necessarily mean, um, you know, not derived from animals. Like you had the one, he says, oh, it comes from beetles, right? I didn't know about that. But um, but also like you have things that sit in between, right? You have like isolates, right? That they're natural, but yeah. they're they're highly processed to get yeah, into that know. ingredient. I don't know about it. So it's like, you know, give me a break, guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I assume most most synthetics come from petroleum. Um, yeah. Which is not which is natural. better. Which is natural, yeah. right? So, I mean, where do you want to take it? Yeah. 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 Again, I guess it just depends on how you use it in what context, and but, it can uh, be interpreted many different ways. Really, and yeah. Broxon is. Yeah. There yeah. we go. What was that? Sorry, I missed that command. Um, and Broxon, all in Broxon is a natural isolate. It comes from like I think Clary Sage, and it's like a molecule isolated out of Clary Sage and Broxon. So, yeah. if you're a natural perfumer, you might consider M Broxon a natural ingredient. So you might upset some people. Yeah, it's it's all very relative. It depends yeah. on how you define things, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. So there's again, <laughs> no straight answer. It seems for a lot of these things. Yeah, that's right. I mean, everything's a chemical, right? I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, from I guess when I think about naturals, I just think about things that are extracted directly from the source without having to modify it in any particular mm -hmm. way. So. Mm -hmm. That's usually how I, in my head, that's how I think about naturals. I don't think I don't think synthetics are bad, and I don't think naturals are bad. Although I do try to, I do agree with the uh, the the sentiment about buying older bottles that are already on the market, where they include things that have unethic come from an unethical source, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I, I, otherwise, I really don't think much. I don't really think about synthetics versus naturals that much um, because yeah, I, I, every, everything's a chemical. <laughs> so, I, don't, I don't favor anything. I think it's the end product that matters, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. And so. like, you know, whenever you talk to a chemist or something, you know, a lot of this stuff is is kind of like like pointless conversation to them, right? Because you say, oh, you know, I I, I don't like alcohol let's say but alcohol there's so many different kinds and with different purposes right. and it's not all what you yeah. think it is yeah you know? so like and like that one woman that that watches us who's like a phd chemist she's you know, chemist, she yeah. said the same thing what about, does aldehyde mean yeah, aldehyde. There's, aldehyde. there's there's a million of them like so like, what do you mean by that of course. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and some of them have natural. smell and some of them have other purposes <laughs> right so anyway yeah. Well, we've uh, we've gone past the hour. I'm conscious of the fact that it's Friday night for you guys, and uh, I don't know what you've got planned. But I think you said you've got somebody coming over, so I, I I'm I'm you know thinking we might might try and wrap it up. Is there anything else? Uh, I, were there any questions that I missed in the in the chat that you know if you really have a burning desire to have answered? And if so, please repost it because I can't go back through the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but any other pride and joys, I guess, Amina, because you picked out your top three, I guess, for your favourites, but um, is there anything that you've picked up? What's the most recent one you've picked up? Am I frozen? You are frozen, uh, yes. Am I back? Okay, wait, my phone. We can hear you. We just can't yeah, see you. Okay, I'm okay. back. Maybe someone's calling. Yeah. Yeah, someone's calling, and I feel like I'm like, but, so what, what were you saying? I'm sorry. <laughs> I was asking you. I was trying to come up with one last question and, and scrambling for something, but I, I, I realised I, I just ended up deciding on asking you what your most recent purchase was in terms of vintage. In terms of vintage? Sure, yeah, yeah, I have it right here, actually. I ended up buying a vintage also you know i haven't been able to date it but this is a rocha's femme that i got maybe oh, you guys yeah, know nice. very nice yeah. Awesome, right yeah. yeah no i got uh not, it's not femme it's a different one but oh, yeah yeah uh, it's more that's a good yeah it's yeah. so good um yeah part list actually yeah 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 so, so i'm really happy 
No, this is, I'm not sure exactly when it was. I haven't been able to date it yet. Um, if I had to guess, because it has virtu you know, vertical lines in it, a lot of bottles from the 80s, I guess, have vertical lines. So I'm not sure, to be honest. I still have to do it. But this is the latest purchase. I got this on Macari, I believe. And I don't know where the box is. I have the box, but I can't. I don't know where I put it. But yeah, this one, as soon as I sprayed it, I understood the height because Michelle, I don't know, I've heard her talk about it several times. I've heard a few people talk about it and rave about it. So I was like, I need to have it. Um, but yeah, I really, I really do like this one. It's it's great. I got rid of my bottle. <laughs> but I'm glad about it. I because I loved the smell of it, but I just didn't like it on my skin for okay. some reason like how it went on my skin and, and now I'm regretting it because I'm thinking I could have just done what Chris does and put it in the diffuser and I would have smelled beautiful the whole house was <laughs> yeah. <beautiful>. okay <laughs> that's not bad. vintage femme in the diffuser not the vintage, not vintage. mine was a modern bottle it was okay. just like yeah. so I was curious to know if anyone smelled the modern versus the vintage and if there's a massive difference but no I, I haven't yet uh, I'm really curious of your thoughts of D DSH Cherie Oh yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I've only I've only tried a couple <laughs> because it only got them what Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday I think I got them. So, um, which was yesterday. No, it must have been the Wednesday then. I can't remember. Well, no, we didn't fly back until Wednesday. What day is it? It's Saturday for me. I keep thinking it's Friday. <laughs> it's Friday for you. It's no, it's Saturday for me. So I got them on Thursday, and yeah, look, there's so many. Hang on, I've got them all here. Because this, this, she was so, I mean, I didn't realise the sample packs were so big. I bought them all, but, um, and then she refunded me some, something. It must have been something that I ordered that she couldn't send because okay. uh, the only ones I can get from her are the wow. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, because they don't have alcohol in them. But, um, and so there's, there's, there's just so many. <laughs> I don't know. And there's another pack down here. So I'm, I'm struggling to know where to even start. The first one I put on my skin was the Pandora because you'd spoken about that and oh. I was really curious about it. There was another one that I tried from the Shepra and there was one from, I got the Carnation pack, um, and I, which is really, there was one from there that I really, really liked, but I can't remember which one it was called. There's so many. I highly um, recommend spraying them, put the, putting them in decanters because I have yeah, already okay. them for whatever reason. I, I Vial samples are tough. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just yeah, can't smell things yeah. unless they're, yeah. like, you know, yeah. yeah. But this first stuff, I don't know why. Yeah. But I always put it in a in a in an atomizer. Yeah. Okay. All right. I might do that then. Um, although I did like Pandora when it was on my skin and the and the carnation one, whichever one I tried. And there was a rose one which I tried as well, which was very nice. Um, but it was a bit too um old school rosy for me if that yeah she does a lot of old school mm -hmm. stuff. yeah so that wasn't my favorite but it was very nice um but yeah they're just they're really good I, and I, and I've sort of been because I on the same day I got my my libertine uh fragrance oils Ooh, arrived as well nice. and I ordered the oil because sex and jasmine is sold out in Australia you can't get a bottle of the perfume here and I had a sample and I really loved it and so I, I decided to get the oil because I can't wait for the perfume to restock um and then at the same time i bought the fin de i don't know how to say that fin yes, de that's, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one that's like um, a bro i like it yeah that sounded really good and i really like it um, which one's that one i didn't get fin, it how do you how do you say it can we <laughs> <laughs> okay you're gonna have to text me that later <laughs> yeah i'll text it to you i don't know if you can you can't see okay that. i don't know how to work the camera um so i'll yeah there's not very many it was the only other one it was because i was ordering internationally i kind of wanted to make it worth my while to yeah. order a couple uh, yeah. instead of just ordering one and that was the other one where the notes appealed to me so i bought that and then yeah, it's it's very nice. I like it a lot. So yeah, I've got I've got so much to keep me going over the next probably couple of months in terms of samples. I, I almost went and bought more samples on something else last night, and I went, no, stop, have it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to buy any more samples. I don't even have enough time to get through what I've got. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's that's that were my sort of more recent purchases. But I am loving the DSH, um, and it's it's definitely a, a journey to go through all of these. And I feel like they deserve 
you know, a lot of time to really yeah. sit with yeah. them and, and understand them well. So for sure. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to let you guys go. Get on with your Friday night and your long weekend. Do you have it? Oh, actually, do you have a long weekend then? Because you said you were working Friday. You worked Friday. So you guys don't get any days off over Easter? I mean, I think the kids had today off. Like my siblings, they didn't have school today. Um, But normal life. So actually, even like like Christmas Eve, it's not a holiday. So if you want Christmas Eve off, you have to take off. Like oh um, yeah, that's the thing here. We don't we don't get Christmas Eve off, but um, Australia is very good in terms of its uh, workplace laws in terms of making sure people get sufficient time off during yeah. the year. So uh, I always feel really bad when I talk to people in the US because I forget, right? I forget um, that how lucky we are here that uh, we're looked after very much. So. Anyway, um, well, thank you so much. Uh, look, it's always an absolute pleasure to talk to all of you. Uh, oh, and this was so fun. Yeah, thank you. I love spending time with Mina. I know. Like, with Mina. I, I know. Like we've been talking for so long. I know. My camera's blurry. I don't know how to fix it, but, you know, it's all right. <laughs> Just working through it. <laughs> yeah, this was great. Thank you so much, Sheree, for putting this together. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, we'll do it again soon. Oh, my Thanks, God. guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.